huge baseballs. Just because you're good at baseball doesn't mean you're a good dude. In fact, there's been a number of baseball players who were just plain criminal. These are some of the biggest offenders in baseball history. Leading off, we have Lenny Dykstra. Nails might have been a World Series champion, but apparently he was a loser off the field. Dykstra's legal problems include a drunk driving crash, indecent exposure charges, sexual assault allegations, a federal bankruptcy case, a grand theft auto case, oh, and making terroristic threats against an Uber driver while in possession of cocaine and ecstasy. Maybe if he was better at that grand theft auto thing, he wouldn't have had to take Uber. Next up is a real lady killer, Julio Machado. Machado was a pretty good relief pitcher with the Mets and the Brewers, but he suffered from a bit of road rage and it ultimately ruined his life. Machado was sentenced to a 12 year prison term in 1993 for fatally shooting a woman in the head after a traffic accident in Venezuela. But to be fair, he was definitely an enormous piece of shit. Next up is Rage Machine, Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley is the name of a wholesome all-American game company. It's also the name of this enormous asshole. In 2013, Bradley was convicted by a jury on nine counts of physically attacking and threatening his wife, including four counts of spousal battery, two counts of criminal threats, and one count of assault with a deadly weapon. He also had one count of vandalism and one count of brandishing a deadly weapon. He was sentenced to 32 months in prison. But that's not all. In April 2018, Bradley was charged with spousal battery again and taken into custody on bail of $175,000 for allegedly assaulting his wife during a 2018 incident while he was still on probation for his earlier domestic violence conviction. In 2018, he pleaded no contest to domestic battery and was sentenced to another 36 months in prison. That's what he gets for hiring O.J. Simpson to be his marriage counselor. Next up is Chad Curtis. Chad Curtis helped the Yankees win two World Series in 1998 and 1999, but off the field, he turned out to be a pedophile. Derek Jeter apparently never got along with Chad Curtis, and former teammate Gay Kapler had this to say after he was convicted of multiple criminal sexual conduct felonies and ended up in prison. I'm floored that I misjudged the character of this man so horribly. Perhaps I was blinded with the mantle of righteous moral authority he always tried to wear and never looked any deeper. Next on the list is Yugith Urbina. Urbina was a pretty good relief pitcher, but he was also a violent homicidal maniac who tried to burn people to death. In 2005, Urbina attacked five farm workers on his property whom he had accused of stealing a gun, all while wielding a machete and attempting to pour gasoline on them. I assume he used a machete because he couldn't find his gun. He was convicted of attempted murder in 2007 and sentenced to 14 years and seven months in prison. He ended up serving seven years of that sentence. Next up is another Yankee, Brian Taylor, former number one overall draft pick. I was supposed to go see Brian Taylor pitch with the Albany Colony Yankees in the early 90s, but the game was rained out and I never got to see him play because he blew out his arm in a bar fight. In 2012, he was convicted of felony cocaine trafficking. That's a paddling. And finally, Mel Hall. When Yankees legend Bernie Williams was a rookie, Mel Hall used to torment and tease him by giving him the nickname Zero. Turned out, however, that Mel Hall was the real Zero. In 2009, Hall was sentenced to 45 years in prison for multiple acts of pedophilia. In 2014, SB Nation published an article detailing just what a scumbag this guy really was. The moral of this video is, don't do crimes. Which crimes did the guy I paid $5 to research this list forget? Let me know in the comments and I'll make a part two. Huge baseballs.